government, and the governed is common law. So for them to continue on saying that the conservation authorities have rights in your property, they don't. Unless you have entered into an agreement with them. Or they have purchased or expropriated your land. So when they send you a notice saying, gee, we're going to give you guys a deal on your property taxes, if you're not firing that into the round bin and you're signing on the dotted line, you're giving up your property rights. Because they will be paying you a subsidy. That's how that works. That's the carrot for you to give up your rights. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not giving legal advice. These are your decisions. I am merely relaying to you the information that very, very few people in this province have even read. Because this is the only way you can actually stand up for your rights. And the best thing that ever happened was in Thedford, with the Thedford Sawmill. Because that was the Lambton Landowners Association, that was the owners of that sawmill taking a leap of faith, their lawyer took a leap of faith, and they beat off the Ministry of the Environment. The Ministry of the Environment has been going around to the different sawmills in the province. And did you know that sawdust is hazardous? <laughs> so they're shutting down the sawmills. They've successfully closed down eight because of hazardous sawdust. So the Thetford owners, the Thompsons, they were notified that they were to be having this inspection. So they had their lawyer contact the Ontario Landowners Association. They had their patents. We did up a letter, the lawyer and myself. And then 70 members of the Lambton landowners were there at the gate to meet the Ministry of the Environment. Um, at first, the Ministry of the Environment said, you can't walk us coming in. We have the authority for warrantless entry. They do not have warrantless entry. They have a right to come up to your door. You have a right to ask them why they are there. Once they tell you why they are there, you can ask them to leave. They need a warrant. Everybody needs a warrant. Sorry, Curtis. They need a warrant. So, that's what they told them. They had two police cruisers there to support them, the Ministry of the Environment did. Said it was to keep the peace. It was a peaceful thing. The owners of the Thetford Sawmill handled the Ministry of the Environment, their lawyer's letter. He took a quick read over it. He says, we'll be back to you. Um, the Thetford Sawmill uh, didn't have an inspection, but they passed. <laughs> 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 so that's the whole thing. Not only that, we have been told by someone that um, the City of Ottawa these last few years have been quite concerned about the letters patent. So, you know, this is the thing. With the letters patent alienating the Crown Domain, we all know now that there is no authority to transfer from the Crown to the province. Because this is where the province receives its authority, is from the Sovereign. So, there is no authority for the province to actually regulate private property. The only thing it has is the reservations. But now you're going, well, how did this all happen? Well, Nick Vandergrant said it really good, but three years ago, at uh, that fish, the red for fish thing? Yeah, Pembroke, I think. Yeah. It's like you're sitting on a pork bench, and someone comes over and sits down beside you. And then they move a little closer. And so you move a little farther away. And then they move a little closer again. And you move a little farther away. 
Finally, they have moved right over to the end and you're down in the gutter. And that's exactly what's happened. They're just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Every time you turn around. Because they don't know the law. And they've made these pieces of legislation so difficult and so vague that you don't know the law. And your lawyers don't know the law either. Because they don't have the time to read through all of these documents. Can you imagine a lawyer who's getting paid 500 bucks an hour, sitting down and reading 387 pages of the Municipal Act? Think of your bill. So this is why I've been working with Terry Green for the last, what, two years, Tom? Yeah. Terry's had quite a few wins. And we're working on more. But the, the beauty of Terry is that he is an open-minded lawyer. He contacted Tom, he heard me on the radio, and he couldn't believe his ears. So he wanted to talk to me, so he got a hold of Tom. Um, I had a two-hour conversation with him on the phone, and then he asked us to come down for a meeting, so I, we went in for a meeting. And that was a good meeting, wasn't it, Tom? Terry had uh, done a lot of background on the things that I had explained to him on the phone. And he basically told Tom, yeah, she's right. Now we just have to train the courts to get this to work. So, that's what we've been doing. Oh, by the way, I wrote a book and it's at the editor's. <laughs> In your spare time. <laughs> yes. Actually, I have done 12 reports in the last year and a half, guys. I have been counting, I, again, I have worn the keys off my keyboard. This is my second keyboard in the last, what, three years. So, <laughs> it's been busy.